The Arabs are in shock. Why? Their Maddi is black. Their Maddi is black. Their Maddi is black. And we have to go all the way back to the beginning. In order for you to understand this whole situation with the Arabs and the blacks, you have to go back to the beginning. Now, before there ever was an Isaac, there was an Ishmael. And he was in covenant with his father, Abraham. But God told Abraham his covenant was in Isaac. It was in Isaac. And it came to pass that Isaac was born. And he was being weaned. And what happened? Ishmael started mocking Isaac. And so Sarah put her and her son out. Now, let's get a hold of this thing. What really is going on today? It's the same thing. This religion of Islam came from us. It is the religion of our ancestors. In other words, it came from the blacks. And it has to go back to the blacks. There's no way of getting around that. Isaac was the child of promise. Haven't you ever noticed that in Islam... Jesus is the Messiah in Islam. When you have a prophet by the name of Muhammad, how is Jesus the Messiah in Islam? These are two different nations. What's going on? The prophet Muhammad was a servant. All he was doing was his day wages. Then he returned back to being a servant. That religion didn't belong to him. That religion belonged to the Maddy. And that's how you got to understand it. You got to understand it as the beginning. Isaac was the child of promise. And Isaac is metaphorically Isa. Don't you spell Isa in Isaac? And Isaac could not raise up the tribes of Israel. Why? Because Allah is going to cause him to die. And so, therefore, in the story of Isaac and Esau and Jacob, don't you notice Esau is in Esau and then Esau is in Isaac? What is all that going into? I'll tell you what this is all going into. Jesus was the promised Messiah in Islam. Not Muhammad, okay? Muhammad was simply using that mantle. But because of the prophet Isa being caught up in Christianity's lie, courtesy of Paul, the prophet Isa has to die. And so the prophet Isa has to take the kiss of death in order for al Mati to take his place. Now think about Esau and Jacob. See, Isa, Jesus, and Jacob, the Mati. Jacob was a smooth-skinned man, just like me right now. I'm smooth-skinned. 42 years old, no beard. I'm a smooth-skinned man, okay? Then we have Esau, who is a hairy man. He was an heir. He was the heir. And what happened was the birthright got switched around, courtesy of Esau being caught up in the flesh. He got caught up in Christianity's lying. That's why he asked his brother to feed him the pottage and he sold his birthright. Why? Because the prophet Esau had to die. And so his brother Jacob, his mom, put the hair on him. In other words, his mom made him the rightful heir. And that's exactly what my mama did. When she named me Daquan, she made me the heir. The prophet Isa will take the kiss of death in order for me to take his place. Okay, I am the deliverer of the nation of Ishmael and the prophet Isa we will meet. And according to the Hadith, he has some work to do. He has to destroy the cross, kill the pig, get rid of the Jizzy attacks. He has some work to do, just like the Joshua. Get it? Jesus, Joshua is where you get Jesus from. He had to kill the accursed from among him. 
he had a man in his camp by the name of Achan who stole some stuff in the battle. And that's Paul. That's metaphorically Paul. Therefore, when Joshua sent his men to go and raid Ai, 36 of the men were smitten. And they ran. They couldn't stand before their enemies. And Joshua, or metaphorically Jesus, was unaware of what happened. So he's all on the ground praying to God, pray complaining. And then God says, get off your face. They're sending the camp. Okay. And so what happened was God told Joshua, he said, look, I'm not going to be with you no more until you kill the accursed from among you. And so Joshua had to go through all the tribes one by one. And he took Zabdi and then he took Akon. And Akon had to give glory to the Lord. He said, what did you do? Give God the glory. Make confession. And he had to tell the truth. He said, when I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonish garment, okay, a wedge of gold and the silver, he said, I coveted it and I took it. That's a picture of Paul. That's a picture of the Christian church. So what happened is the prophet Isa is now going to be put to death. That's why God told the prophet Isa. He said, did you say to the people worship you and your mother as gods? Okay, the prophet Isa was questioned by Allah and he will be put to death. Christians don't get this. Israelites don't get this. He will be put to death. And so he had to pass that mantle to the real son, to the real heir. And that is Jacob. You see, the Maddie was like a reserved copy. He was the rescue for the prophet Isa because Paul was claiming to be his father. Okay, so all those times Jesus was saying, my father, my father, my father, my father. He was talking about El Madi. He was talking about daddy, daddy Mac. Okay, he was talking about me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he comes in the room, the light bulb gets turned on and he tells you things that contradicts your beliefs. Like when he told me I was the prophet Isa's father, I was like, whoa, he was like, yeah, you're his father. If it wasn't for you, the prophet Isa was going to be in the same prison next to Paul. OK, so I give God all the praise. I give him all the glory. And now we have a better understanding of. Of what has happened. The religion of Islam. Never belonged to the Arabs. Never did. It belonged to Isaac. And Isaac was blind. And he passed that blessing. On to Jacob. It skipped past Isa. Because the prophet Isa. Has to die. Ain't that so sad. This is why there's going to be a whole lot of crying. And Allah revealed to me, he answered my deepest, darkest question. Before I was in Christianity, before I was in Islam, I used to always wonder why I seen the hospital room and why I heard that conversation with my mom and the doctor. Now I understand why, because El Mahdi was in heaven. When Jesus said, my father, which is in heaven, Allah has no son. So who was he talking to? Who was he talking about? He was talking about El Mahdi. All the times. All the time. So when you look through the Gospels, it's in parables. And if you notice, Jesus used the word father more than anybody in the Bible. And he was speaking parables. He was talking about El Mahdi. And Paul came along and tried to make it seem like he was talking about him. Paul wanted to be El Mahdi. I used to teach and preach that he wanted to be Mohammed. That was still right. Okay, because El Mahdi really is Mohammed. Okay, and that's the straw man for those who understand those terms. That the prophet Mohammed was really a prophet going through another prophet. And that prophet was the prophet Mohammed, the real Mohammed, El Mahdi. You see, Jesus told us, he said, look, if you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you receive a prophet's reward. And the religion of Islam is a prophet going through another prophet. The prophet Muhammad was really going through El Mahdi. So when you reject Muhammad, you really reject El Mahdi. 
And when you reject El Matty, there's nothing else for you. You're done. Okay? If you accept Mohammed, you accept El Matty. But if you reject El Matty, you're done because he's the Deuteronomy 18, 18 prophet. And yes, I speak in third person. Allah speaks in third person. And the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was literally speaking in third person of El Mahdi when he referred to himself as the messenger of Allah because he was using that mantle. Now, a lot of these things get confusing if you don't study. That's why I study every day. When I wake up, I'm in the Quran, in the Hadiths automatically. I have to make myself get in those books. And then afterwards, I go into the Bible. I'm a studier, man. I can get something out of the Book of Mormon. I've read one thing in the Book of Mormon that always stuck with me. A Bible, another Bible. What's wrong with these people that are saying Bible, Bible, another Bible? What's wrong with more of my word? Okay, what's wrong with more of God's word? So stop allowing people to make you not want to read the Quran. Read it for yourself. That's just like somebody telling you, look, mama's uh, apple pie ain't that good. No, taste and see for yourself and taste and see that the Lord is good in his word. It connects everywhere. An advanced person who's in studying, you can connect the Quran with the Bible. I see the religion of Islam in the Bible and we want to deal with these scriptures. We want to deal with two scriptures in Isaiah. Now, the Arabs, you're going to be in shock. You're going to be in shock because your Mahdi is black and you don't know because your scholars have been in the dark and they don't know nothing about the Bible. They've been ignoring Bilal and that's why you're being stung by a swarm of bees right now, a swarm of killer bees. Let's go to Isaiah 21, 17. And the residue of the number of archers, the mighty men of the children of Kedar, shall be diminished. For the Lord God of Israel hath spoken it. Now let's go to verse 16. For thus saith the Lord, said unto me, Within a year, according to the years of a hireling, and all the glory of Kedar shall fail. Just think of Ishmael. He was Abraham's only son. But then Isaac came. And he had to go. Okay. He had to get up out of there. Okay. And it's the same thing with El Matty. Once El Matty comes into picture. The glory of Kadar fails. The glory diminishes. And that scepter. That ark. That Kaaba. All of it. It goes to El Matty. But the amazing thing about God's grace is. He's allowing the black and brown. To still be in this whole mix. The thing is, is that the black man is on top again. Okay, you're not running nothing no more. And your messenger went from Arabian to black. And if you can deal with that, that's awesome. Okay, we can split the moon. You can have one side. I can have one side. That's what the prophet Muhammad really did when he split the moon. Because the moon is the symbol of Islam. And he split that kingdom because God made promises to David that he will raise up from his seed. A king that would rule forever. And it should have been a prophet Isa. It should have been a prophet Isa. But Paul, Paul, Paul. He was misguided. He was misguided by Satan. A sworn enemy to us all. Satan was on the prophet Isa's heels. Okay. He took him up to the mountain. Tried to get him to worship him. He was on him. And he tried to take him through Paul. But there was a ram. There was a ram. And that was Al Matty. Al Matty was the father. Every time the prophet Isa was talking about father, father, father. Jesus was rescued. Jesus was rescued. Okay. And I give God all the glory for that. So we just went over Isaiah where it talks about the glory of Kadar is going to diminish. Now let's go to Song of Solomon 1 and 5. All you got to do is type in Kadar. Type in Kadar. Kadar literally means tongue of Arab. Okay, that's exactly what it means. Kadar means Arab. There's no way of getting around it. 
The judgment is already sealed. It's written. The glory of the Arabs is going to fail. Why? Because God has rose up Al Mahdi and now he is the ruler of the Arabs. And this is seen in Song of Solomon chapter 1 and 5. So please don't let your husband take you to hell. Don't let your husband, don't let your wife, don't, you gotta, you gonna have to choose life for yourself. If you are a Muslim, I know this is a hard pill to swallow, okay? But you're gonna have to choose what's best for you. Now, this is the thing. Y'all talk about you love Muhammad, Muhammad, Muhammad. We love Muhammad, we love Muhammad, Muhammad. Well, how come you don't love his messenger? Al Mahdi, Al Mahdi, how you pronounce it? Because y'all give me a hard time on how I pronounce stuff. al Madi, Okay. That was the prophet. The prophet went through. Okay. If you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you receive a prophet's reward. And you were receiving al Madi through the prophet Muhammad. So if you reject al Madi, you're done. You don't love Muhammad. You a joke and a hypocrite. Now you're going to have to swallow your pride. Humble yourself just like I humbled myself. I came out of an Israelite movement where the black man was on top. Okay? And I came to y'all. I just wanted to be a part of the Islam community. Didn't matter. Okay? But then Allah had better plans for me. And I, I got to go with his plans. He showed me I'm the ruler of the Arabs, and I'm going to show you right here in this verse. Song of Solomon, chapter 1 and 5. I am black, but calmly. That means beautiful. Oh, ye daughters of, in the Daekwant Clay translation, Ishmael. As the tents of Qadar, that's the Arabs. As the curtains of Solomon, that's going into Solomon. Solo man is the last Solomon, and the last Solomon is Al Mahdi. This is why your prophet chose to live poor, because the money is mine. So come join me. Look not upon me, because I'm black. Because the sun have looked upon me. My mother's children were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyards. So God has exposed two things. He exposed your racism. He exposed your racism right there. And he exposed that you're angry. And those are the two main things that surface when we talk about a black Mahdi. That's what happens. So you got to save yourself. You can't go by what people say and what people think. These scholars are off. They don't even understand if music is haram or no. They don't know what to do about the hijab. There's a lot of things that's going on in the nation of Islam. And we are slowly but surely going towards Christianity's ways with these denominations. The religion of Islam has to be restored. And it has to be restored by someone who is chosen. Okay? Your scholars, they talk a good game. They have a little history. But they don't know nothing. They don't know metaphors. They don't even know that their Maddie is black. Okay? So you got to give me a chance. Now, first person who accept, I'm going to treat them real good. Okay? I'm going to give you a prominent spot. Okay, I'm going to hook you up, okay? You're going to have some rejection from your own people, but you got to stand up for the truth. Now, you know dang well that the stuff I'm bringing out, you know I couldn't bring out this information on my own. You know I had to be guided to bring this out. So look through the channel. Look through the things I'm talking about and make a decision to choose real Islam today, okay? It's been prophesied I'm going to lead a crusade. And Allah is on my side, so I'm going to be victorious. Now, you can get on the winning side, or you can be, like the Quran tells you, one of the losers. Why would you be a loser? Now, the choice is yours. You can make a choice. But you need to make a good choice for your family, for your babies that's dying. All of those massacres that took place over there is simply because of the judgment that had came upon Qadar. Allah is not wasting time. I've been here since 1982, okay? Many people thought the world was going to end in 2000, and you know what? It's close to it because I'm here, and when the Mahdi is here, that's because it's the last day judgment coming up soon. When I made the title, you know, Arabs are in shock because their Mahdi is black, it wasn't to disrespect you. You know, I love y'all, you know? 
Don't the prophet Muhammad tell you in the Hadiths that the mountains love you? I am Lamonti. My dad's name was Monty. He died. Okay. We love y'all. We love y'all. And there's some of y'all by faith, I believe, who love us or else the prophet wouldn't have said that. So with Song of Solomon 1, 5, and 6, we understand that the ruler of the Arabs is a black man. We can't say this scripture is not authentic because in chapter 5, verse 16, the prophet Muhammad is mentioned by name and his physical attributes, the color of his eye, his hair, his skin is all in that same chapter. Now, God had to do that for you to give you faith, to let you understand, to let you see that I am Al Maddie. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the real truth. Choose Islam today. Donate, support, so we can get this truth to our people in Palestine. There is supernatural help right here in the house of David. Now, the Quran talks about the sun rising from the west, and that's going into how the Mahdi will be right here on the west side. Throw up the west coast. Throw up the west side for me. We right here. Okay. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters. In true, 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 true,